In Revelation chapter 17, we see the woman and the beast. And I'll read the notes from the Matthew Henry commentary. This chapter contains another representation of those things that had been revealed before concerning the wickedness and ruin of Antichrist. This Antichrist had been before represented as a beast and is now described as a great whore. And here, one, the apostle is invited to see this vile woman, verse 1 and 2. He tells us what an appearance she made, verse 3 to 6. And I'll read that portion of the notes, verse 1 to 6. Here we have a new vision, not as to the matter of it, for that is contemporary with what came under the three last vials, but as to the manner of description, etc. Observe. The invitation given to the apostle to take a view of what was here to be represented. Come hither, and I will show thee the judgment of the great whore, etc. Verse 1. This is a name of great infamy. A whore, in this passage, is one that is married and has been false to her husband's bed, has forsaken the guide of her youth, and broken the covenant of God. She had been a prostitute to the kings of the earth, whom she had intoxicated with the wine of her fornication. The appearance she made, it was gay and gaudy like such sort of creatures. She was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Verse 4. Here were all the allurements of worldly honor and riches, pomp and pride, suited to sensual and worldly minds. Her principal seat and residence, upon the beast that had seven heads and ten horns, that is to say, Rome, the city on seven hills, infamous for idolatry, tyranny, and blasphemy. Her name, which was written on her forehead, it was the custom of impudent harlots to hang, hang out signs with their names, that all might know what they were. Now in this observe, she is named from her place of residence, Babylon the Great, but that we might not take it for the old Babylon literally so called, we are told there is a mystery in the name. It is some other great city resembling the old Babylon. She is named from her infamous way and practice, not only a harlot, but a mother of harlots, breeding up harlots, and nursing and training them up to idolatry in all sorts of lewdness and wickedness, the parent and nurse of all false religion and filthy conversation. 5. Her diet. She satiated herself with the blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus. She drank their blood with such greediness that she intoxicated herself with it. It was so pleasant to her that she could not tell when she had enough of it. She was satiated, but never satisfied. Just reminded of the future. It seems so horrible, so evil, and yet uh, many things are happening today. There is coming a day when, in the future, when these events take place, there will, there will be those who look to the Bible and see exactly what is happening. God will give them the ability to see through the lies of Satan and the demons and unbelievers. That's only if you are his. Just reminded that we are to hold on to God's truth, to follow Him. And He gives us the insight to see into the world as no one else can see. Because we have the truth of God's Word. God is truth, and He is the light. Our Father in Heaven, thank You for this time where You allow us to read Your Word and to hear the notes from Matthew Henry. Help us, Father, to apply these words, to be aware, to be on guard against the world and the things of this world. It's very alluring, enticing, and yet it has no life. Only, only you can give life. Shine your truth into our lives. Open our eyes. Open the eyes of those who are blind to see that they may escape from the deceitfulness of this world, which is temporary and passing away, but you and your word remain forever. Help us to trust you instead. We pray and we ask all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.